Welcome to Grace Church on the Hill, to our Christian Education Hour. And it's my pleasure today to be talking to Tom Fitches, who is an uh, organist here and uh, has been interviewed in the past for Christian Education. But today, our specific topic is the organ of Grace Church, and we're going to get a closer look at this instrument and learn about the instrument itself. I am uh, what you might call a total novice in this field, so um, I hope you'll bear with some pretty amateur questions, but um, I know we're in good hands here with Tom. Tom, great to, great to be with you. Good to be here. Good to be here. Micah? Well, Tom, I'm wondering if you could start us off just telling us about organs generally. How is it different from a piano? Is it like a piano? What T just tell me a little bit about um, the organ as, a, as an instrument. Well, uh, the, the, the biggest difference between a piano and, uh, and an organ is how it's, uh, the sound uh, is, is, uh, is, is used, uh, manufactured. Uh, of course, the piano, you have, <clears throat> you have strings and a single keyboard, just a, a single keyboard. Uh, with 88 keys. Um, on the organ, uh, we have multiple, we can have multiple keyboards um, and uh, so only 61 keys in, on each keyboard. Um, and uh, also you've got a variety of, uh, of, of stops and sounds that you have on the, on the organ. Um, the, another big difference is the way the organ, the sound is produced. It is a wind instrument and there's a big motor down, downstairs in the basement that, uh, that uh, a big huge fan that uh, circulates wind and uh, supplies the wind to the, what's called reservoirs and uh, you'll get to see them later on. Um, but the uh, the pipes, the, um, the the Scots Scots used to call them in the early days a, a kist of whistles, and this is what uh, uh, what differentiates between a um, a piano is is that it's uh, uh, a good many um, of pipes that uh, that sound through wind that's um, that's forced into them. And um, so, uh, and you've got, uh, as I said, uh, lots of sound, uh, different sounds. Um, and, uh, but first of all, I want to say that uh, in terms of playing, uh, uh, differences in playing the instrument, um, with a piano, you're obviously very close to the uh, instrument. And um, in a way, it's a lot more satisfying to, uh, to get variances of uh, uh, volume and uh, the, way, the way you can uh, phrase a piece of music. It's much more intimate. Here, we're working on, a, in this particular instrument, a series of uh, like doorbells, the same system of doorbells. A, uh, um, you press a key and uh, a valve opens fairly soon, but you only have one uh, sort of one, one volume on each note. But it, it climbs, it, uh, as you go up the scale, it seems to get uh, a little uh, louder, so you can get a crescendo. But um, the other thing is about the difference between a piano, playing a piano, and uh, an organ, is that you have to be closer, to, uh, your, your fingers have to be closer to uh, the keyboard with an organ. Um, uh, you don't have, uh, like a piano, you don't have a, a damper pedal to continue on the sound uh, once you lift, lift your, your fingers off. As soon as you, you lift your fingers off and the sound uh, stops. Unless, you, of course, you have a marvelous building like this one to, con uh, to continue the sound, the uh, fine acoustics, with the fine acoustics. So, um, um, 
Can somebody who has been practicing uh, playing the piano um, learn how to play the organ? Uh, of course, but it's, um, it's good to have the background of uh, piano playing for uh, at least until grade eight uh, conservatory. And uh, this is so that an, uh, one can uh, develop strength in the fingers which you really need to, to have to, to play the instrument. Okay, well, let me, um, let me uh, just play a few things uh, and tell you about the different keyboards. That sounds great. I'd love, love to hear some samples. Uh, the, um, the, uh, uh, it's really four organs in one. <laughs> and uh, this is um, the, the main organ is behind the case, which you will see later on. The, uh, and uh, the dis display pipes are called the facade. And uh, there's a whole division, it's called the Great Division. And they, um, uh, that has most, the most exposure of the, of the organs. And here, here's an example. That's the great organ, and uh, it can uh, it can wall up uh, have a quite a, a sound, big stirring sound. The next division is called the swell division, and that's because um, it, uh, it it's in a separate room with uh, what is called shutters. It's like Venetian blinds, and you can uh, when you operate the uh, the pedal down here. Those blinds, they open and close so that you do have some kind of control of the uh, volume. Here it is. I'll open it up. and you can draw it back uh, to a whisper. So that's the swell. The third, third division is the choir division. It's the smallest division, and it's also under expression, so I can start small. Yeah. And open up the pedal to make it louder. It's softer. The fourth division is the um, pedal division. That's a lot of fun. And I'm playing, I usually play with, so, uh, with uh, shoes, but I'm, I'm actually uh, with my socks. I like to play the, with the Tootsie roll um, with them. And it's an independent, um, it's an independent uh, organ with its own pipes. And uh, and you can you can uh, quite p play quite quickly on on those. So something like this. <clears throat> You know, there's a separate technique for those, and uh, uh, one of the one of the things you have to coordinate, of course, is your hands and your feet, and that's that's uh, easier than it uh, it, it sounds <clears throat> with with practice, of course. It really seems like you've got a you know you're using all four limbs in a. I guess sometimes you use your feet too in, in playing piano, but uh, it seems in that respect like a, a more involved instrument. And I, I've also noticed just that, you know, just some of the samples that you've played, uh, there's such a range of sounds there, um, almost like you're some kind of one-man orchestra. Um, I wonder if you could tell us more about just um, that range and, and maybe the specifics of this this organ, the Grace Church organ. 
Well, that's right. The, um, the, the piano has only, in terms of pitch, has only one pitch. And, uh, and of course, it, you expand uh, with the, you know, um, going up and down with, uh, with the uh, keys. Um, so uh, here, here is uh, the same pitch, it's called eight foot pitch on the organ. Now I can, uh, I can play an octave uh, higher with that by drawing out another stop. So here it is. I draw out the four foot, an octave higher. And then I can play two octaves higher, two, all with that. And I'm building up a chorus, you see. And I can actually go lower by adding a, what's called a 16-foot stop. And that gives you a little bit of grandeur feeling there. And then to top off the chorus, I add a strange thing called the mixture. And that is actually four pipes on one note playing at the same time. I'm going to play just one note and you listen to, I'll pull at the stop and you can hear four different uh, pitches. And there's actually uh, 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 about two different uh, keys that it's playing in at the same time. If I play, if I play the, uh, the mixture, it brightens up the whole ensemble. And, and that's, that's what it sounds like if I play on the mixture alone, going up the scale. So that's the basic sound of, of the organ. And then, um, yeah, uh, we have some orchestral sounds as well. Uh, Mozart, uh, of course, uh, uh, described the, uh, the organ as uh, the king of instruments. And um, that isn't, uh, his remarks are not only uh, uh, talk about the size of the instrument, but also what uh, the different sounds that it uh, can achieve. Yeah, it does have uh, some orchestral sounds, but they're not produced the same way as, as their instruments. Here's a, a, a couple of flutes. This is a small flute made of metal and it's got a stopper on it, and uh, it's, it's quite quint. Uh, you use that for sort of early music. And then we have a more open flute uh, that's more like an orchestral flute. But again, it's not really uh, a, a flute as a flautist would play. But here it is. That's the wrong one. And that's a, a, a more fulsome sound because it's an open flute. The, uh, uh, the pipe isn't covered. Here's another, I'll show you, here's a, a flute, a wooden flute with a stopper on it. If I were to take out the stopper, then you would have a, an open flute playing a, an octave higher. So it's made of wood, and, uh, and then there, uh, there are some pipes that are made of, of metal, too. Uh, so in the uh, reed department, we have some, uh, we have an oboe sound. Uh, 
That's sort of an imitation oboe. We have a clarinet. A little darker than the oboe. We have funny uh, stop called the Vox Humana, and it's supposed to imitate um, a, uh, uh, the human voice, but actually it sounds more like a billy goat. <laughs> It's quite useful, actually. And then we have the bigger trumpets. We have a wide array of trumpets. Uh, this one is a chorus trumpet on the swell. We have a bigger one on the grate. completely different sound and then we've got a big uh, trumpet, a big bombard on the um, choir organ. And uh, if I give it some chorus, you can hear, hear this. Um. So there are some of the different sounds. Uh, earlier you might have heard some fun sounds. We have, um, um, we have high pitch sounds, pitch. You know, cute. Uh, there's, a, there's a wide array of, uh, you know, um, making up different choruses, flute, reed choruses and uh, Lots of different sounds. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about this specific instrument, about maybe uh, how old it is and where it's come from. Um, well, this instrument was built uh, in 1926 uh, by the uh, Quebec uh, firm of Casabant Frere. And um, it, uh, uh, it, it's, um, it was started off as being a kind of a romantic, French romantic uh, organ. Uh, and it was designed, uh, uh, all the, uh, the, the specifications was designed for this particular building. Um, and, uh, and, the, and the casework uh, also uh, was designed for this uh, building. The good thing about this instrument is that it's well placed so that it has um, easy aggressive sound both for the choir and the congregation. And it has, it has a um, um, sort of a, a monastic kind of view too. Um, the architect of this uh, church, a uh, Grace Church, was a, um, a very much involved in uh, sort of medieval studies. And this is a medieval space. And uh, so there was uh, that in mind. It, um, they, uh, they designed uh, an instrument to fit in both uh, so that the, the uh, uh, visually it looked good as well as the sound. Um, and then in uh, 1962, there was uh, quite a, a, a change in the uh, tonal work of this. Uh, in the 1960s, uh, uh, people were uh, uh, drawn to more the Baroque or the Renaissance uh, bright sounds of the organ. Um, and so uh, we, uh, all the great stops were replaced with new ones at lower pressure and, uh, and they have um, a lot clearer sound. Uh, 
and very transparent. And brighter sounds, too. And more colorful sounds. So they were more sort of Baroque sounds. We couldn't call this a Baroque organ now. Uh, we would say Neo-Baroque, because on a Baroque organ, it has to be uh, uh, a, a different kind of action, not electro-pneumatic, like this is. Um, you would need tracker organ or uh, a mechanical action organ to be officially called a Baroque organ. But this has Baroque sounds to it. And then, um, so this uh, had a major change there. And then later on, the console was, uh, uh, was uh, sort of uh, computerized and we added uh, a modern solid state to it. So it uh, improved the action and, and so forth and what you could do with registering. And, uh, but in the 1920s, a lot of organs were being built, especially by Casavant. 1926, 28, uh, a lot of the churches in Toronto had Casavant organs, larger ones than this, and, um, and uh, uh, like St. Paul's, Metropolitan United, uh, and not just churches, but uh, places like uh, the Royal York Hotel had in the Imperial Room a large five manual uh, Casavant organ that had what was called traps in it too, like snare drums, uh, kettle drums, uh, castanets, um, xylophone, and all the birds, bells and whistles, <laughs> I should say. Uh, amazing instrument, a lot of uh, building of the, the organ, so um, in, in the 1920s.